Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering AWS reInvent 2017. Presented by AWS, Intel, and our ecosystem of partners. Well, welcome back to the Sands Expo. Here we are in Las Vegas at reInvent with just about 50,000 of our closest friends. Big AWS community gathering here all week long and it's a pleasure to be here with you on theCUBE. Along with Keith Townsend, I'm John Walls and we're now joined by Peter Smale who's the Vice President of Marketing and Business Development at Datos IO. Peter, good to see you. Thanks for having me, I'm glad to be back. And, Love being on theCUBE. I mean, you were just last week, right? Yeah. CUBE conversations yeah. with John Furrier, so uh, we're going to have to start charging you rent. <laughs> I, I, think. I, only have, I only have two numbers in my head right now. 18 billion, 40% yeah. CAGR. <laughs> those are the only two numbers I have. Those are the only two numbers I, I have in my head right now. For those of you not in the know, those yeah. were the numbers that AWS was talking about in terms of revenue and growth. Yeah. Crazy times, crazy show, good stuff. Well, this, this show really does embody that. It certainly illustrates that. I mean, we've only been here, we've been, the door's been open for about a half hour or so. Already wall-to-wall -wall oh. traffic. Yeah, people yeah. were queuing up to, to yeah. get into the, yeah. to the expo floor, which is, yeah. I don't think I've seen that. I swung by our booth, you know, 28, 25, I swung by there at 11.20, it was Santa Room only. It's like, it's great. It's great, the buzz, I mean, you can feel it. Well, if you're not on the floor, come down to the floor, because you can just feel the energy. And even still, just walking up here, you know, and the, you know, if you've been here to the Sands, you have these giant hallways. I was here probably two hours ago, yeah. and it was already wall-to-wall -wall people, and it was just packed. I was really impressed. Yeah, I mean, they, like, the conference started in full tilt at like seven o'clock this morning. Yeah. People just out and just engaging. All right, yeah. so, so you guys, you said, you're here, the relationship, obviously, AWS, we're going to get into that. You got yep. the booth here, 2825? 2825, yes, sir. So, so let's talk about, first off, about your presence here. Yeah. Um, you know, what brings you into this community? You've been here for a while now. Yep. Um, and maybe the evolution of that from the three, sure. four years back to where you are now. Yeah, so we're, I mean, our view of the world aligns incredibly well with AWS, which is the whole notion of that the world's moving to the cloud. You know, we've been in business since 2014. We are a cloud data management company with primary use cases around backup and recovery, as well as things like data mobility. And essentially, our view of the world and our strategy is that as the world moves to the cloud, organizations are either, they're building net new applications, they're building modern applications that they're running in hybrid cloud environments. Those applications need a fundamentally new approach to data management. That's what we do. About 50% of our customers run natively on AWS. So this is a very logical show for us. We've got customers building these new modern applications. They're hosting them natively in AWS. They need backup and recovery. They need data mobility. That's what we do. It's just a perfect fit for us. So Peter, let's talk a little bit about data mobility. You guys are unapologetically cloud first. You know, <laughs> we, we, we've had this conversation in the past just offline. Talk to me about that conversation with customers, how that's evolved from three, uh, four years ago to now. <laughs> I will, I'll use another quote from Andy from earlier this week, which is, or, or I guess this is from Jeff Bezos, theoretically, it's the whole thing about they're willing to be misunderstood for a while. You go back four years, early days, it's like, yeah, we're doing cloud first backup and recovery for you know, modern applications, you know, the, built on the MongoDBs, the Cassandras, the non-relational databases. It's going to a non-relational world. And in the early days, people would laugh and they'd be like, why are you doing that? And we were steadfastly believing then, as we do now, that the world is moving to the cloud, the world is moving largely to a non-relational world, and so there's going to be a huge opportunity to provide data management solutions, data aware data management solutions for that. So we've stuck to that, we've been steadfast in that, but to your point about maturity, what's been really exciting for us as an organization is that I go back even a year, and you talk about, you know, so what do you do? And you give them the pitch, and there was a fair amount of nuance to it, and they'd be sort of like, Roop. you know, they'd sort of give you the, hmm, you know, they'd kind of ask questions or whatever, and, and then once you talk through it, Maybe it, was a, maybe it was a 10 minute elevator pitch, if you will. You, know, you had to go like 20 floors. They got it, but it was a little bit more nuanced. Now it's, okay great, are you, move, you, know, are you moving to the cloud? No brainer. You know, are you building modern applications? Are you reporting your old applications, building these new modern applications in a non-relational world? Absolutely. Are they running in production? Yes. How are you protecting those applications? We have no idea. Right. You know, kind of thing. Or we're using native tools, or we're you're scripting, or we're not doing anything. So it very, to your point, the conversation has become much less new, it's not even nuanced anymore. It's, the qualifying questions are incredibly simple and our value proposition is incredibly easy. If you're running applications, if you built net new modern applications running in the cloud, or on-prem that you want to back up to the cloud, 
You need, you need modern data protection, that's what we do. But let's talk about this hybrid IT scenario. I was at dinner last night with a couple of Fortune 500 AWS customers, and I was talking to them about the assignment of this whole category of data protection. Yeah. They were like, backup, how is, that, how is that sexy at all? Right. And then we got into this use case of data mobility, of, you know what, I've built something really big on-prem, yeah. and I need, I need to, John hates this term. I need a multi-cloud strategy. Yeah, I know John's not a huge multi-cloud. He doesn't like, a, he's he pressed a, me yeah, last furrier. week on the whole multi-cloud. Yeah, yeah, Furrier. 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 Is yeah, oh, sorry, yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, I don't talk. want you to reach over and backslide <laughs> me here. So, so you're all in on multi-cloud. Okay. Right. Furrier so, we got to worry about. My whole life. Talk to us about the importance of using what we would have traditionally called backup as a data mobility strategy. Cool, absolutely. It, it, it all kind of comes down to, for us, being data aware. I mean, if you think about it, we're a cloud data management company. Our number one use case is backup and recovery because the first thing you have to do is you've got to capture the data. You've backup got to make- Backup and recovery of my VMs, right? Well, we're actually, good question. Now we are unlike, unlike traditional backup and recovery, we're not infrastructure centric, we're application centric. We're actually agnostic to the underlying infrastructure. So if you're running bare metal on-prem, if you're running you know, on EC2, if you're leveraging S3, wherever you're running, we're fine. Because we're actually, we integrate at the application level, at the database level, hence our focus on non-relational. Our number one use case is protecting that data. And because we are, because we're application aware, because we're data aware, and we integrate at the database level, we understand the underlying schema. We, have, we are aware of the data structures within the databases that people are, prote are protecting first and foremost. But, in the context of data mobility, to your point, the number two use case for us is that organizations want to protect their data, but then they want to do things like, I want to spin up copies or sub-copies of my data, of my backup copies, for test dev, for QA, for performance testing, for cloud instantiation, for archiving, for BI, whatever I want to do. The key is, we're not a migration company. Like, you know, AWS has migration services. If you need to like, you know, if you need to move, you know, two petabytes of data from on-prem and you're not going to host it in the cloud, that's not us. But, if you built these new applications and you want to basically intelligently use subsets of your data for those workloads I was talking about, we enable you to be incredibly intelligent about only recovering, if you will, or only moving the data that you need. So, for example, simple things like with our RecoverX 2.5 that we just announced we do something called queryable recovery. Okay, what that means is I can do everything from say, star.peter star, or I can pick individual rows and columns. Just pick and choose. I can pick and choose based upon my database schema. I can mask columns of data if I have to do GDPR compliance or PII. So from a use case standpoint, it's all about being aware of the data that you actually, in the first place, you're backing up, but then what data you want to move so that you can be incredibly intelligent and efficient about the data that you're moving. So well, in traditional systems, I can encrypt data at rest. I can yep. back it up, that back, my tapes can be encrypted, my disk that's holding that backup data can be encrypted. When I think about that, when it comes to backing up object store into the cloud, yep. how do I do that with? Great question. We are, again, because we're not infrastructure based, we're not LUN based, we're not block based, we integrate at the database level, we are completely transparent to encryption. We work perfectly fine with encrypted data. We were perfectly fine with compressed data. We invented something called semantic deduplication. If you're familiar with traditional deduplication, right. you know, it works at a block level. Fixed your variable length block. In a cluster database environment, or in a compressed or encrypted data environment, it kind of throws the capabilities of traditional dedupe out the window. Semantic deduplication understands the schema of the underlying database. So we encrypt, you know, excuse me, we, we, we are highly efficient deduplication for encrypted data, for compressed data, we're transparent to that, if you will. So again, back to our cloud-first model, we built that in from day one. You know, it's a fundamental, our, our underlying architecture, the platform that we've built is fundamentally unlike anything else from a traditional backup and recovery or data management platform. All right, so uh, make sure I get it right before yep. we say goodbye. Datos IO 2825. 2825. On the show floor. Correct, www.datos.io. If you are running applications in the cloud, and you need to protect those apps, please talk to us, we'd love to help you out. If you're looking for data mobility solutions, come talk to us. There's the pitch love to chat. right there. Peter, thanks for being with us. Next week you're off, all right? <laughs> and no more. All more. right, we'll have to cancel that <laughs> one because I'm back <laughs> next week. Back to back Hubers, but we'll give you, maybe we'll give you a week off. Thanks for having me, always like being here, appreciate Peter it. Smell. Thanks for being with us. Back for more here at reInvent, we're in Las Vegas, live here on theCUBE. Back with more right after this.